Now to Syria, where the threat of chemical weapons appears to be growing tonight. There is new proof this evening those weapons may now be in the hands of both sides. ABC's Alex Marquardt got inside Syria, where he saw firsthand the suffering, and tonight he reports from the Turkish border. Alex. Good evening, David. Today, one of America's closest allies, Great Britain, said that it had also seen evidence that Syria has prepared chemical weapons. But so far, no proof has been offered publicly. At the same time, Syria says the rebels could use chemical weapons, ratcheting up the tension in this bloody conflict. Fighting has gripped the capital, Damascus. The rebels are trying to take the airport, a potentially huge logistical and symbolic blow to the Assad regime. American officials are scared a desperate Assad could use chemical weapons and said regime forces recently prepared components of sarin gas, a highly deadly nerve agent. Syria doesn't even acknowledge having chemical weapons and says they would never be used against their own people. His forces are inflicting big losses on the disorganized rebel fighters, several of whom we met inside Syria yesterday, recovering from battle in a makeshift hospital. They're young. Ahmed here is just 17. Next to him, Abu Ali, a 28-year-old father of three who lost his leg and finger in the fighting. But once recovered, he told us he hopes to rejoin the fight with his prosthetic leg. The rebels are now trying to organize themselves better in order to secure funding and weapons from the outside. Today we learned that a former army general has been elected the head of a new military council. But given the lack of coordination and organization until now, it remains very much to be seen whether a unified force can be created that can bring down the Assad regime.